bunch of people made a lot of terrible mistakes, and we came and did what we could to get them out of a jam. I'd say, friend, if you hadn't screwed up, I wouldn't be here. The best thing could happen to all of my people would they run into all of you. The whole secret of this business, I think, is to know your job in, as intimately and as interconnected as you possibly can. Very important to know the enemy is fire and how the enemy spreads convection, conduction, and radiation. And you got to know your battlefield. You're going to do battle on the fire ground, so you got to know the battlefield. The premier position that the workers in this room is put, have put this service in is that we are the most popular service, we're the most accepted service, and we're the most trusted service. We have two in and two out. I says because firefighters are worth saving. His message was always to make a difference, to live life so that you were leaving a mark. This award shows our family that he truly made a difference. If you've been in fires a lot, no matter how experienced you are, you got to have somebody on, on your shoulder telling you that, you know, they're backing you because you don't know. There are times when you say, uh, hey, God, just get me through this, you know, I'll be a good boy, and you know, I'll go to church on Sunday, I'm going to take care of everything. Get me through this. It's a super thing, and I am very appreciative of this award. I would just like to leave one simple little message today, especially to the younger people. You can make a difference. If my father were here this morning, he would, he would remind us of the cold hard fact that no leader is any greater than the men and women that he is called to lead. To be able to work at an occupation which brings tremendous personal satisfaction and to enjoy the association with the marvelous people we have been privileged to work with makes firefighting enviable to those sentenced to much more mundane warfare. Those were our past Lifetime Achievement Awards winners. And I have a rare opportunity this morning. I get to introduce, well, to honor and to say thank you to someone that I call a friend, a brother, and an inspiration. I know many of you have also been inspired by Dr. Dennis O'Neill. We can all remember the first time we saw him striding confidently across the grounds of Emmitsburg, so dignified, so composed. And as I look out on the audience today, I can see that many of you, like me, are starting to dye your hair gray to kind of look more like the doc. So, make you look smarter. That, but seriously, that look, that unique Doc O'Neill look, our superintendent, our friend, and our brother, that's the Doc. Let me recount for you for a moment some of the career highlights of Fire Engineering's 2007 Lifetime Achievement Award winner. Dr. Dennis O'Neill was appointed in a non-political, nationwide competitive search. He was appointed in 1995 to be a superintendent of the National Fire Academy. He is the first non-political appointee, and the position was selected after an exhaustive search. It wasn't just a little search, it was exhaustive. In 2006, the NFA trained over 78,000 firefighters and officers from all over the 50 states with a cadre of more than 500 instructors. He's a lifetime resident of Jersey City, and Dr. O'Neill graduated from Rice High School in Harlem section of New York City in 1996. After that, he was drafted into the Army in 1967. Dr. O'Neill returned home from overseas with an honorable discharge in 1969, and he began attending the New Jersey City University on the GI Bill. He was among one of the first six graduates there to receive a Bachelor of Science in fire, from the Fire Science Department in 1976. He immediately began graduate study at public administration at Fairleigh Dickinson University. He was awarded a Master's of Public Administration in 1978 and began teaching in the Fire Science Program. In 1983, he began doctoral studies at the Steinhardt School of Education at New York University. NYU conferred a Doctorate of Education on the DOC in 1990, and he taught the Master's and Doctoral Programs in Education at NYU for five years. Now, before I go any further, he really was a firefighter during all of this, too. <laughs> Firefighter Dennis O'Neill joined the Jersey City Fire Department in 1971, rising through the ranks to, and finally being the acting chief in 1995, where he led a uniformed force of more than 600 firefighters and officers. Dennis spent the entire time on the street as a line officer. During that time, he also coached thousands of New Jersey and New York firefighters to take, to take and prepare for the civil service promotional examinations. Dr. O'Neill has, has won too many awards for us to mention. We could list stuff from now till, till it's somebody else's turn. 
He's won so many awards. But we did ask a few of his close friends to comment on the doc for his receiving the Lifetime Achievement today. Gary Brees, former IFC director, had this to say about Dennis O'Neill. Gary said he is a person who genuinely cares about the individual, the profession, and about the institution of the National Fire Academy. And that combination is good for all of us. Steve Edwards, the director of the Maryland Fire Rescue Institute, said, I truly respect Dennis O'Neill. He is the consummate professional, a rare mix of fire service, street smarts, and a doctoral degree. And most importantly, he has never forgotten where the street smarts came from. Steve said he saw this once in a meeting in Washington, D.C., and to quote Steve, the bureaucrat that faced Dennis never knew what hit him. On a personal note, I can remember reading about Chief Dennis O'Neill early on. It's a great story. It's the story of a mom and pop chemical plant. Remember, this is New Jersey. On the 4th of July, it's on fire and leaking. Now, downwind are hundreds of firework watchers on a typical New Jersey, one way in, one way out, no escape road. And Chief Dennis O'Neill in command re receives the following report from a dispatcher. The dispatcher is relaying that a chemical expert thought that if the fire was extinguished with water, everything would be okay. Then there's a pause on the radio. And a very calm Dennis O'Neill stated, I don't care what he thinks. I want to know what he knows. That story is legendary. That story marks the hallmark of what real leadership looks like under pressure in combat. It paints the portrait of a true fire chief and a true gentleman. It's how America sees our fire chiefs, and it's how we see Chief Dennis O'Neill. Friends, fellow firefighters, former NFA students, I'm extremely proud and extremely honored to ask you now to please rise and join in welcoming, welcoming Dr. O'Neill to the stage, the 2007 Fire Engineering Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Chief Dr. Dennis O'Neill. Quite honestly, I never thought anyone would ever do anything this nice for me while it was still vertical. But uh, it, it's really nice. Um, I suppose that a lot of people would be anxious to talk about their accomplishments, but I'm not. I, um, I think like most people that, that have these things happen to them, they realize that they really stand on the shoulders of people who have gone before them, people who have stand next to them, and, and people they admire. And um, when I talk about that, it's kind of a three-legged stool. And, and the first leg of that stool are the men and women of the fire service who encourage me every single day I go to work. I get up in the morning and I work for you. And if you don't believe me, check your pay stub on the federal withholding tax. <laughs> and I, I love working for you. I really do. The second leg of the stool are the men and women that I get to work with at the National Fire Academy. You know, Roxanne and Smiley White are here, and Patty Oddbird and Tim, and th there's a whole bunch of folks here, and, and, and they work very, very hard for you every day. Of course, the men and women that I worked with in the Jersey City Fire Department as well uh, are the second leg of that stool. And the third leg of that stool is my family, my wife of 36 years. My daughter Katie and her husband Ron from the Fairfax Fire Department, and two great granddaughters, and my son Brian, a Jersey City firefighter and a United States Marine Iraqi War veteran. And if you're very lucky, and you work hard, and you enjoy your work, Maybe you'll get three legs on a stool like I have. Thank you all. Thank you. We have.
If you'd indulge us for one more second, I'd like to invite Chief Ron Kennerman from the Merck Fire Department and the President of the National Fire Academy Alumni Association. Ron Kennerman. Thank you, Bob. Good morning. Congratulations. I'm going to put that up here for a second so the cameras can get a shot. We've just honored the most dangerous man in America. This guy's a truckie with a Ph.D. I'm telling you. Of course, as you know, a man who rose to the top of his game, and actually he's the top fire instructor in the United States by his title. The National Fire Academy Alumni Association wants to recognize the outstanding choice fire engineering at Penwell has made in selecting Dennis for this year's recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award. I know firsthand that the National Fire Academy has become the premier federal training system of all federal training systems, bar none. This hunk of glass up here indicates a mountaintop. Let me read what it says. Dr. Dennis O'Neill, Superintendent, National Fire Academy, for reaching the peak and staying there. Today's date. Congratulations, Doc.